Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today, we're doing another installment of the weekly meta breakdown where we look at the top performing decks on the MTG Arena ladder. This particular video will be for historic best of one format. Uh, if you're looking for Explorer, Standard, Alchemy, whatever it is, just check out the playlist. We try to cover uh, each of the formats, best of one and best of three, as frequent as possible, ideally weekly. Um, with Historic and Explorer, it's been kind of hit or miss with just the volume of games played in the best of three format. Uh, I, wherever possible going forward, I'm going to combine for Explorer and Historic best of one and best of three into singular videos. However, for this Historic video, I've been trying to find a suitable amount of data for uh, best of three. And while I have deck lists, there's not enough to actually aggregate win rates. So I, I don't feel right sharing that information without it being uh, like an actual win rate associated with it. Now, let me know in the comments if you'd still like me to just share deck lists that are generally viewed as the more popular deck list for best of three, I can still do that. Um, or if you're still more interested in having those win rates associated with it. Speaking of win rates, where we're getting this data from is on TapGG, what you see on the screen. Uh, it's a companion tool that runs alongside your arena client, tracks win rates, loss rates, deck collections, in-game overlays, whole bunch of cool features. A lot of it is free. Um, the link is in the video description if you want to get started with that. Uh, and I'll paste all these deck lists as well. So historic best of one, January 6th through to the 13th. And it is going to be 37,000 games of Magic played, Platinum to Mythic rank. And uh, I always get the question, what about control? What about control? What about control? Well, for all you blue-white to fairies, today's your day. Top deck of the week, blue-white control. And this is probably the most annoying version of blue-white control. So what's more annoying than it's a fairy hero Dominaria? Uh, wandering Emperor, Farewell. Well, what about Nine Lives Solemnity Lock? So this combination of cards, so Nine Lives says if you're to be dealt damage, you put a counter on it instead. And uh, if you have nine counters, you lose the game. Solemnity says, well, you can't get counters. So therefore, it, lo it prevents Nine Lives from going up. Your opponent can't deal damage to you. There's two ways you can get around this. You can, uh, well, three technically. If your opponent has their own Farewell, Ugin, anything that blows up all enchantments, Nine Lives leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. Stomp from Bonecrusher Giant says damage can't be prevented, as well as Questing Beast says damage can't be prevented, which circumvents this so you can push through damage for that turn. So be mindful of that. But otherwise, this deck's just got a lot of cheap interaction. You have Manatize, Jawaris, a bunch of counter spells. Uh, you have a bunch of Sweepers and Divine Purge, as well as Supreme Verdict, Fragment Reality as catch-all kind of removal, Farewells on the top end, a couple Planeswalkers, and Kalim to kind of tap down your opponent's stuff and also serve as a win condition as well. This is a Yorian pile, so 80 card special, and a uh, whole bunch of dual lands in here, like a Hall, a Castle, some Utility lands. Uh, but if you want every game to take 37 minutes, it's at 6.2, but that's probably because your opponent's conceding at that point but uh you might just run into the mirror and just no one can ever win ever um but this is kind of a way to play a control game in the format so control you're satisfied this week next up we have is it wizards which is a list that has been um popular for pretty much monthly on end um this version here is actually closer to the version i was playing so i was on two strangles main um and then the mentor's guidance over the uh, expressive iteration guidance can be cast on two it doubles up so it can allow you to trigger both symmetry sage and soul Car scar mage on turn two whereas in the, the iteration you don't really want to cast on turn two because you don't get the full value out of the card strangle helps you in the mirror um, because you're able to take out a turn one symmetry sage where your other burn would not normally be able to hit that but the core of the deck is you want to buff up your Dreadhorde Arcanist with either Balmor or Symmetry Sage to flash back your spells from the graveyard. Uh, Reckless Charge just allows huge amounts of power bursts and haste. And then Static Discharge cast multiple times, just keeps scaling and dealing a lot of damage. We then go to Is It Belcher? So this is a combo deck, which basically is built around a singular card, Goblin Char Belcher. So when you activate this card, you reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a land. Deal damage equal to your opponent based on that number of cards. Um, all the lands in the deck are the module dual face cards. So while they're in the deck, they aren't treated as lands. So when you activate Belcher, you basically flip the entirety of your deck and deal that much damage to your opponent. 
Um, you can do this as early as turn three through the ability to make treasures in either Magma Opus or Strike It Rich. And then you cast Iron Craig Feet, which generates seven mana, enough to cast and activate Belcher in the same turn. You can also use Indomitable Creativity to sack any of your artifact treasure tokens, and the only artifact in the deck is Belcher, so you always find it that way. However, typically in that sequence, you don't have enough mana the same turn to activate it. So you are exposed for a turn. The Iron Craig Feet is the fastest way to kind of combo out there. Um, we then go to Rakdos Midrange. Um, so this is kind of the deck that's featured in every format right now on Arena. Uh, this is the Explorer version, where the core of the deck is always built around Fable the Mirror Breaker, Shieldred, Blood Tide Harvester, some cheap removal or discard. Um, the Explorer version, you obviously get access to Bonecrusher Giant, um, you get access to Thoughtseize, Chandra, um, and then this version here, you also get access to Inquisition of Kozilek, as well as Season Pyromancer, which lets you refill your hands. Plays really nicely with Shieldred as well. Uh, just a lot of individually good cards, Liliana, you have Artifact, Sack, a whole bunch of effects like that, and then just utility lands like Castles, Creature lands, stuff like that mixed in. This one's at 61% win rate. You then go to Mono Red Aggro. So this is an Annex version of the deck. Um, the biggest difference between this version and the Explorer version is you get access to Reckless Ringleader, where this one drop does a whole amount of work in this deck. Um, giving something haste so you can haste out an annex that turn uh, and this version is just looking to turbo cleave so dump your hand as quick as possible with like burning trees robbers stuff like that and ember cleave as quick as possible the ember cleave helps you uh, get through like elves and stuff like that um, i will say the wizards matchup is really bad um, so if wizards is popular i played a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of mono red and that matchup's pretty rough um, a version that I've been playing, actually, um, I got to Mythic with this in best of three. Um, yeah, your, your, your boy can play best of three, but I was playing Mono Red Burn in best of three. I went 8 0 in best of three, got into Mythic with it, um, and was just like smashing people. Like a lot of 2 0s, 2 0s. Uh, that one, the client crashed, but I got my 2 0, 2 0, 2 0, 2 0. Um, so it's got Ayalon of the Great Revels, just lots of burn spells, the alchemy card Melt Through just to kind of leave damage on the creatures, static discharges, card advantage and electrostatic blast. Um, this deck's been pretty sweet. I've liked even just like the axis of like the Planeswalker package sideboard um, kind of mixed into there as well. This version here should give you a little bit more in terms of answers to like the Wizards deck and stuff like that. Uh, and you're a little bit more interactive. You are weaker with this deck into something like Angels. Um, while the life gain heliod combo you can deal with pretty easy, uh, the angels deck because of four toughness is something harder. While you do have access of soul scar mage to shrink things down, you usually have to use two spells per creature, and it's a little bit rougher there. But I'll paste this list too if you're interested. Uh, we then go to those uh, pesky little elves, and uh, there's always kind of variations. Sometimes they have the planeswalker in it, uh, other times they don't. But this version here is really just utilizing all your ramp creatures. You have Lord Effects and Elvish or uh, Leaf Crown Druid, Elvish Arch Druid, Impervious Perfect. Um, this version here is looking to generate a lot of mana and then eventually create a Hoof Behemoth your opponent. Um, this version also looks fairly budget because you should be playing the one mana Mythic uh, Allosaurus Shepherd. It's just another effect that lets you pump mana into it. Um, so probably trim down on some Impervious Perfects. Play your Allosaurus Sh Shepherd. That card's very very good. Also your mana base. Um, you should be playing a Bazeju, a couple of the green castles mixed in there as well. Um, but this version looks to be all about the hoof in this one. Um, and then lastly, uh, Rakdos Trap Finder combo. Um, so there's actually two versions of this deck. Um, one sec. I'll pull up both so you can see. Uh, they're both extremely click intensive. Uh, this deck's also very good in best of three. Uh, Miss Min popularized this deck and got number one mythic with it and had like a a 96 and 7 win rate or like just crazy ridiculous win rate um but the core of the deck is the only two creatures in your deck are goblin trap finder and ominous traveler trap finder uh finding traveler makes it zero mana so you can repeatedly cast it for zero mana and then with astronaut's altar you try to net mana each time you cast so by finding one mana creatures, 
or two mana creatures, or even like the um, three mana zombie rider that makes a zombie when a zombie dies, nets you mana. And basically you try to cast through as many times as possible and build out a board state by netting you mana each instance of that. Um, from there you have a couple options. You can just make a really big board, beat your opponent that way. You also have access to Karn the Great Creator to Aetherflux Reservoir out your opponent um, and kind of deal those final points of damage that way there. Um, so if you want to click, 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 it is very click intensive, but it is a powerful deck. Uh, similarly, there is this Rakdos Arc Arclich, uh, Aseric the Arclich. Um, so basically, same idea. Trap Finder reduces the cost of Aseric. And with the combination of Relic of Legends, Relic of Legends lets you tap a legendary creature you control to add mana. So the Trap Finder makes this one mana. The Legend lets you tap your Aseric. Uh, because it has haste from the trap finder to generate that black mana so you can repeatedly cast it um, and then you can go through dungeons multiple times you could drain out your opponent that way you can draw through your deck and then eventually get to grape shot and grape shot your opponent that way there uh, this one here you need to be in full control uh, to tap in response uh, again just a very click intensive process you have the aetherflux reservoir same karn bush board package in there uh, you'll notice like the ornithopter is just a way to kind of get another storm count out of there. I uh, get some value. So that's it for the week. Uh, let me know what you've been playing in the comments. We'll catch you next time. And uh, good luck ranking up. And uh, let me know your thoughts on the best of three. If you just want me to paste deck lists uh, that are popular. Or if you also want um, the win rates associated with it. In any case, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great one. And stay safe out there.